Let's make a Christmas wreath featuring the Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching! I'm going to start off with a sign that I repurposed that came from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use this calendar. Just full of gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Shine bright and all that you do is the name of the calendar. And this is the, De the December picture. I'm going to take these pics that I got on clearance last year. I'm not sure which store they came from. These are from the Dollar Tree this year. And these were also thrifted. Just be sure that whichever picks and flowers that you use that they match whatever is in the design of your calendar page. Makes um, a more cohesive look, I think. This is a thrifted wreath that I, believe it or not, got recently. This is to give you an idea of the size. Be sure that you get your wreath all fluffed. Pine stems are not curved or crooked or twisted. And so to make it look a little more realistic, you want to put everything back in order the way nature intended it. And it is a circle, so we're going to have everything going in one direction. Choose clockwise or counterclockwise and just be consistent with that. Some of them go inside, some of them go outside. Lift the ones up that are in the center so that it looks more lifelike. I have not been to Goodwill since March, right before the pandemic got rough. We went back just a few weeks ago and I was, I had so much fun. All right, I'm gonna be using a glue stick on this. An easy way to get that off, it will just sand right off of that backing. You don't wanna use the side that has anything raised on it unless you sand it down because it's gonna show through if you use a glue stick to stick your picture down and you don't want that. You want it to be as smooth as possible and still with black paper you can see every little lump and bump as you will see shortly and you just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect but just do the best you can. If you use a glue stick you are going to get um, a little more freedom of movement. It doesn't soak your paper so that's a good thing. And it's easier to work with, just in my opinion. You can use double stick tape. You can use, you know, a little bit of hot glue if that's what you want to do. But the hot glue is still going to leave a line that you will be able to see. Since there's no frame to cover up any mistakes, you're going to do the best you can to get this um, nice and neat. I don't want any peeling around the edges, so I'm going, going to go all the way to the edges. This is a jot glue stick. I get them from Dollar Tree. If you go about the time that school is supposed to start back, you can get big packs of these. So it makes them very affordable. Really help you stick on your budget. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Would you agree with that? I think so. Okay, so I'm going to be pressing this down. Trying to keep it in the middle of our sign that's underneath. And then I'm using my wooden ruler just to press out the bubbles. And you can see here there's a little bit of... Um, residue from the glue stick that's on the right side and that's just a bubble that I'm going going over there let's see there's a little little residue so I'm just gonna lift that up take it off a little more glue press it back down you would not be able to do that if you use hot glue because you would probably tear your page but you can see there are some wrinkles in here 
you just kind of have to work with them. If you get a little bubble, lift it up, press it back down. Sometimes when I do a project with the glue stick, um, they turn out absolutely perfect without a wrinkle in sight. Sometimes they don't. It may be the type of glue I use. It may be whether or not I'm in a hurry. It may be the material that I'm sticking it to, but you know, just kind of work with it. It's really kind of relaxing to me, so I don't mind. Okay, the hole in the top where you hang the calendar, I'm just gonna use my black um, scratch furniture scratch marker and just fill in the hole there. And then also I got a little rough with my ruler, so if there's some spots that I scratched, I'm gonna add a little bit on there so that you can't see those marks anymore. And when it dries, you can't see it at all. So now we have the sign part ready and we have our wreath all fluffed up. I'm going to take my little foam sander and just go around my edges. I'm pressing away and down with that, just on the edges. It's going to give it a more of an intentional look. So there was a little bit of room on the top. I'm just kind of fraying that black to give it a, a lighter color like on the sides and on the bottom because it wasn't uh, exactly in the center it wasn't exactly the perfect size so and you can just go back in if your back if your background is black just use a black marker to fix any little scratches or scrapes or if you know you tear it and like I have there I have some little spots that you know have like a little tear or a gap if it bothers you, you just go ahead and use a, a black marker and fill it in. Okay, so to hang this on the wreath, we're going to take two pipe cleaners. I'm going to put a bit of glue on there. More glue than I generally use, but I do not want this to fall off. And I've already definitely got my money's worth out of this particular sign because it was used in a square wreath that I had, and I will link that for you. So you can watch that. And that was a fall project and I'm reusing it for this Christmas project. There's my coffee cup. Yep, real life people. Gotta keep the, the Joe in me to keep going. All right, we're going to put this on the side, but you can put it in the center or anywhere that you like. This particular wreath from Goodwill has quite a bit of fallout, but it's a pretty wreath. I like it. It's just kind of messy. Required quite a bit of cleanup, vacuuming. So take your pipe cleaners. You want to make sure that they are wrapped around the wire, not the stems themselves, but the base of the wreath. And you're just going to wrap those around and that will hold it firmly in place. I have two bunches of these poinsettias because it's a rather large wreath and I'm just going to press all of the leaves up to the top and I'm going to cut the stem so that they are at a manageable length. I want to be able to wrap the stems from the pine wreath around them to hold them in place. Because the less glue I use the easier it will be to dismantle this and use it for another wreath or another season. There's a big variety of poinsettias at Dollar Tree this year. All different kinds of colors and textures. There's just in the white itself, there's a velvety, like the ones I have, they feel kind of velvety. There's that, there's ones with silver centers, there's ones with gold centers, some of those are sparkly. There are, there's a red, a dark red, um, there's gold just about any kind of color you could think of for Christmas flower they have it in that poinsettia so you can decide which one that you like best I just felt like this more neutral color would look better with this particular calendar sign so I'm going to be working on practically I guess the left side and I'm going to be focusing most of my foliage on the left side since my sign is taking up so much of the space on the right I just space out each of those picks 
and then each of the berry stems and then with the flowers the same thing I'm just gonna space them out I have a new camera holder it's not exactly a tripod it attaches to the table so I'm trying to get used to how close and how far I should be so you, you definitely can't see everything I'm doing here but you could probably get the idea do you see how I wrap the stem of the pick with the stem from the wreath and that's what you do and those berries are on wired stems so you can pick those up or pull them apart whichever way now some places in this wreath all I have to do is just push the stems into the wreath and it will hold it and in other areas it needs to be twisted to stay in place So the one on top should stay there pretty well by itself. It will be inside the house and not on a, an exterior door or wall, so it should be okay. But for the rest of them, just give them a little twist and press them down in there. You want some of the flowers to be toward the center, some toward the outside, some toward the inside. And you will actually get a better look at that when I show you the pictures that I've taken. And you'll get a better look. This is a pretty and simple wreath and you can make this quite easily and quite quickly. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in saving money and making beautiful works of art for your home, be sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.